So what we're doing today is we're having a look at how we can use simple iPhone footage, do a little bit of camera tracking, do a little bit of compositing, and using some cool EB synth animations that we created for a different project, bringing it all into After Effects and creating a cool end result. And if you want to know more about compositing and camera tracking, do check out the 10 part series on an introduction to After Effects. In the final chapter of that course, we're having a look at this full workflow and going from boring piece of video footage to incorporating animated stuff directly into it. All right, with that plugin out of the way, let's get into the showcase. But do keep in mind the video you're about to watch, just like my shirt, not safe for work. So parental advisory, yada yada, roll the tape. So here we're just having a quick look at the breakdown of the entire process and we're starting things off by doing a 3D camera track inside of After Effects. Simple effect that you just throw on the footage and it's going to go through and analyze it and give you all of these tracking markers that you can then select and define where the ground plane is and create a null and a camera. Then I'm just dropping in my EB synth animation, I'm copying the position from the 3D null to my layer just doing a little bit of adjustments on scale and anchor point to get her into the size and position that I want her to be in the shot. And again, as mentioned before, if you want to know more about this entire workflow, do check out the tutorial I have on the EB synth process. Perfect. Do check out the tutorial I have on compositing and camera tracking as part of the introduction to After Effects course, because I'm doing a lot of similar things in this quick little breakdown. And what I'm doing right now is I've just duplicated the layer, rotated it to be on the floor, scaled it, and this is going to act as our shadow. So to create the shadow, we duplicate the layer, we create a new black solid and just fill everything in the composition itself. So she is now fully black and we're going to add an adjustment layer with a effect called camera lens blur. And the reason I like using this one is because it allows you to control the level of blur on your image through a different layer. In this case, we're going to be using a gradient ramp. So we're creating a new layer, applying the gradient ramp, which goes from white at the bottom to black at the top. And I'm adding that as a layer into the camera lens blur and you'll see that now we have no blur at the bottom but more blur at the top and when i move these points around on the gradient layer you can also see how the blur changes so back in our composition we just have a pure black shadow with some blur further away from her and then we can just turn down the opacity of course we can do a better job of matching the shadow color and shadow 
values compared to the real life shadows in the shot, but I'm just doing a quick little breakdown of overall process. And the next step that I added to the specific shot was just a bit of geometric circles that act as just something interesting to add to the shot. So I'm adding a shape layer, just a stroke, and that's also gonna be a 3D layer, duplicating that a couple times and just moving that around the scene to just bring a little bit more interest to the scene. After this, you can go ahead and spend lots of time adding more layers to do color correction, to do adding some glows, to add noise to the shot, to better match the shadows, and all of that kind of stuff is what we have a closer look at in the compositing tutorial as part of the introduction to After Effects course. So I'm just gonna close it off here for this one, quick little breakdown, and that's how we do it. Mm -hmm.